Hello, and this video is titled, In Defense of Theocracy. So, in uh, public school, in high school, we are taught that one of the great evils of the past is the combination of church and state. And that may have been true in Europe, in, you know, the Holy Roman Empire, possibly. Uh, or the Vatican may have had its um, influence in the state. But how bad was it really? How detrimental was it really? This is a question I've been asking myself for probably the last six months <laughs> to a year. And definitely been asking myself this question. Um, I, I would I'd say probably like in the, maybe in the last three years. And the reason for that is because our secular atheism seems to be so incredibly corrosive, unbelievably corrosive to the fabric of our reality, to our uh, mainstream culture. And the cure, the hope, the enlightening um, solution seems to be Christianity, seems to be organized religion, or at least, at the very least, spirituality, at the very least, the belief in a higher power. And we can lay the blame of so many social ills on this uh, corrosive secularism, because when you have a government, when you have a society that is completely disconnected from God, completely disconnected from a set of morals, from a higher power, then what governs that institution? What governs that government? <laughs> what governs that society? Well, the seven deadly sins consume that society. When, you, when you're completely lacking a sense of God, when you're completely lacking a sense of spirituality, inevitably the society becomes consumed by the seven deadly sins, like greed or wrath or lust, or gluttony. All of these things are so familiar to America, to the modern Western world. And really, uh, The Seven Deadly Sins is such a perfect summary of the failure of the human condition, or the potential failures of the human condition. And this is where we inevitably stray towards when we lose sight of God, when we lose sight of Christianity and the teachings of the Bible. And so one would conclude that a theocracy is actually a great thing, is actually what we need at this present point in history, at the turning of the ages. We could use a little bit of theocracy to keep us grounded in what is noble and what is true and what is right. And something else, another quality that is so incredibly important that comes with the belief in God, that comes with spiritual thinking, is the recognizing that we exist within an infinite expanse of time. We are a blip in the grand scheme of things, and our the significance as an individual is, I wouldn't say meaningless, because that's like depressing and nihilistic, but our significance as an individual is a, a, a dot on the timeline. It is a, a blip on the radar, <laughs> and thus, we need to kind of uh, submit to the greater whole of existence, submit to the, the greater story of humanity, instead of maximizing um, our wealth in this day, in this year, in this, uh, in this generation. The belief in God comes with a reverence for the past and a duty to the future. So in a, in a secular world, we hate the past. We spit in the face of the past, of our parents, 
of the people who came before us, of the wisdom that came before us. And then we also have a hopeless future <laughs> because we exist in a decaying society. Our, our society is decaying and, and ripping apart at the seams all around us. And so we have no hope for the future. Secularism has hatred for the past and despair for the future. Theocracy has reverence for the past and duty for the future. And there's no reason that theocracy cannot embrace science. There's no reason that uh, theocracy cannot embrace the future. Quite the opposite. Um, a belief in God, a respect for God, is an appreciation for science, an appreciation for the laws of physics, an appreciation for the earth. So, theocracy is completely in line with uh, what many call progressive thinking. And it is also in line with what many call conservative thinking. Uh, just as my other video says that my system combines uh, far left and far right, well, theocracy can combine progressivism and conservatism at the exact same time. It can build a world where uh, we have both of these seemingly combative ideologies or thought forms and combine them and create a synthesis where there once was conflict or where there usually is conflict. And specifically, a theocracy when it comes to the government. The government is this strange institution, and it, it uh, encompasses a strange part of society, and that is the monopoly on violence. It is this special and dreadful thing that has existed throughout all of history, and something that I actually would like to uh, experiment with dissolving but I thought, uh, I personally thought it was a little too much for most people, dissolving the monopoly on violence. But I would love to see that um, tried and tested in different city-states, for sure. But in my specific city-state, uh, we retain the monopoly on violence, uh, unfortunately, because I, th I think this is the tragedy of history, the main tragedy of history. And uh, if you have an institution with a monopoly on violence, it needs to be grounded in morality. It needs to be grounded in a higher power. Otherwise, it falls and fails uh, into the seven deadly sins. It becomes assaulted by corruption and by evil. And this is the last institution that we want... <laughs> succumbing to corruption and evil and yet it always seems to the recurring theme throughout history is that the government is corrupt and the government is evil and the government is harming its own citizens and if we had a tool such as theocracy which could significantly reduce the tragedies of history wouldn't we want to embrace that tool wouldn't we want to embrace that thought process, that way of being, that way of thinking, that way of seeing the world, I would certainly want to embrace <laughs> that ideology, that religion, that spirituality, because it is fighting against the number one tragedy of history. And to simply do away with theocracy, um, simply due to some vague interpretation of progress, of human progress, I think is one of the, it will become, or it will be seen as, one of the greatest failures and shortcomings, and um, just a, a total ignorance of the human condition, of psychology, of spirituality, of uh, collective health. I think um, a utopian society or a protopian society 
is completely impossible without at least um, a moderate grounding in theocracy, in theology, in mythos, and in God and in spirituality. A secular and an atheist society will inevitably succumb to corruption and evil. And the great tragedies of the 20th century, World War I and World War II, and these horrific, untold acts of evil, of collective evil, should never be forgotten. And we should never forget the close ties they had with the rise of secularism and atheism and the rejection of God. Anyway, I think I'm going to wrap up the video there. And everyone remember, a single dream is more powerful than 1,000 realities. A real human.